All right, what's up Banshee fans around the world? What's going on everybody? I've got a little bit of battery life back. A little bit, little bit of battery life in the camera. Let's see how long we can make this run for. So it's uh, September 2017. It's, it's a pretty nice day today. Not wind isn't too bad. Just down here at the Florence Goose Pasture staging area. And I thought I would uh, give a little bit of an updated tour with, with the Banshee. I think last year I made a video on it and I just thought I would give an updated, a little bit of an updated version and an updated uh, talk with uh, what is up with this Banshee. You know, really nothing special. This this bike here, I wanted, uh, wanted pretty much an all go, no show bike. Something fun to play with, just an all around duner. Uh, you know, that's the kind of riding I do. I'm not, uh, not all about, you know, just running up the hill all day long. I mean, to me, it, uh, you know, it goes beyond just, it goes beyond just drag racing. But yeah, if you want to go drag racing, this will, this will get her done. This will run up the hill real quick. Uh, also, we'll just start off talking about the motor. The motor is a, it's a ported servo. It's a 421, uh, four mil stroker motor it's got uh, 24 cc pump gas domes run pump gas in this no uh, no race gas i've had my race gas days race gas definitely you know the motor gets a, a little bit of a better pulse from it and it runs a little cooler on race gas but uh it's just not not in the budget you know i do a lot of riding so you know if you ride if you ride a couple times a year then yeah i could see you know buying uh buying all the race gas you want but anyways back to the build here uh, it's basically it's just got the the basic the standard clutch it's got a red line clutch in it <clears throat> uh, that's who built this engine cameron with uh, red line racing sweet home oregon this is the second motor he's built for me and uh, again he didn't disappoint uh, it, it just it runs like a rape tape it really really hauls ass looks like uh, my seat is coming apart there a little bit yeah, the motor the motor hauls ass. It uh, I had him split the cases, go through everything, do all the all the mods to it that you would do, and it's really really tight. It's got uh, shearer small bore pipes on it with uh, the Cascade 93 decibel silencers on it. It's got a dual pingle on the gas tank. Uh, we've got the the uh, the cap here has been all all uh, modded out and bored out for for maximum amount of airflow and maximum amount of airflow and ventilation i've got the vent tube running all the way down the frame all the way coming out here so we don't get any you know fuel spillage all over the place i did the same thing with the the um, coolant line coming off the top of the radiator right there I ran that one all the way through through the a-arm mounts as far as the front suspension it's all stock We've got some 22 by 11 by, what are these, 22 by 8 by 10 fully buffed uh, smoothies here. Well, they're actually, they're, they're trackers. Uh, the rear paddle tires, we've got some 22 by 11, 22 by 11 by 8, 73 rollout ultralights, or they're 12 paddles. Going to be replacing these here pretty soon. I've got one tire over here that's got a hole in the sidewall, and... I've tried patching it a few times, but I think the, I think the carcass is pretty much junk. I'm also, you know, missing a couple paddles, so you know these things they don't last forever. Just like tires in your car, they wear out. Talk about the gearing. We're we're just running 1442 rear sprocket. It seems to be pretty good. I like it for the kind of riding I do. I don't have much of a six gear. It's pretty much uh, one through five, uh, which is. You know pretty much what you want but gearing is is kind of like uh you know how do you how do you like your uh, your girlfriends or your boyfriends <laughs> uh what do we got we got carburation we've got some v-force four reeds with some 35 with some upp intakes and some 35 pwks jetting uh i am running currently 55 pilots uh cel needles third clip with 152 mains and the air screw is about two turns out so jetting is going to vary uh from where you live it's running good it, it took me a hell of a time to i had i was getting messed up with the pilot jet so 
I was running 48s, I was running 50s, and I needed to go bigger pilots. And I think it... Okay, back to Banshee talk. I don't know where I left, I kind of, kind of remember where I left off. The battery, battery died in the GoPro. You guys know how that is, right? The batteries, they don't last that long. So we're back. Uh, today we're, uh, we're actually here down here at Winchester Bay today at the staging area. So I just thought I would just finish the rest of the, the Banshee talk, the Banshee tour. I think we left off, I was talking about the jetting. And yeah, it took me a while to get the jetting dialed in right. I was off on the pilot jet by about two sizes. I was lean on the pilot jet. I needed to bump it up to, to rich. And I was fighting it and fighting it and fighting it. And I finally, uh, I met some guy actually randomly out in the dunes that was uh, very knowledgeable with Banshees. Had owned a lot of Banshees, Cubs, ported, a lot of different engines. And he's the, the one that uh, suggested going with a, a larger pilot jet. And he even, he even told me that, uh, you know, the pilot has a tendency of, uh, you know, really messing, mess, messing with you a little bit. You know, it's hard to, it, it, can, it can trip you up because you think you're going uh, the right way with your jetting and you're actually not. So, you know, when it, when it comes to jetting, my suggestion is, is if you're going one way and you're not really getting anywhere, meaning it's not cleaning out, it's not, uh, it's not running, you know, it doesn't sound right, just try going the other way. Try going way the other way. Not, not too far, I mean, now I'm talking pilot jet. On a pilot jet, you're not gonna burn the motor down if you go too lean, on, on a pilot jet, it's mostly on the main where you've got to, you have to be careful. Yeah, just uh, try going the other the other direction with it and see what happens. But once you get the the jetting the jetting dialed in right, man, it just you you will know you will know it has a uh, you will know it's it's jetted in right. I mean, you'll come over, you'll whack the throttle all the way, and it'll just open right out, and it'll sound good. A lot of jetting is done just by hearing just by the sound of jetting and and experience if you don't know what you're doing then you probably should put it on have a pay to have it put on a dyno that would be my suggesting if you really don't know what you're doing because you'll spend a lot of time and a lot of trial and error trying to figure it out if you're willing to have some patience it, it is a jetting is a learning curve and I, I really suggest that if you don't know much about jetting just just try learn take your carburetors apart, take your jets apart, and just try by the good old trial and error process, and you will learn so much by that. And I'm, I've never had this bike on a dyno, maybe someday I will, but I am glad that I've went through the process of learning and understanding how to jet my bike. So I've got a really good understanding now of how to do that and, and, and how to tune it. So so yeah, uh, that, that would be would be jetting. What else, you know, like I said, this is just, uh, the bike is pretty much stock. I wanted to, well, as far as a lot of the parts on the bike are stock, the rear end is stock. It's just been extended four inches. I wanted to try to use as many stock parts as I could. Uh, I've owned other Banshees. You know, my last one was all, it was my last one I had was long travel. It had the long travel front end. It had a six over rear swing arm. It had the uh, wide, wide axle on the rear. And you know, it, you know, it was good. I mean, it rode, it rode really great. It was great for, for just doing really fast duning through, fast riding through the dunes. I mean, it really absorbed everything. But I don't know. I just kind of, uh, I got tired of it. and I just decided I wanted to just kind of go back to stock. So I kind of, uh, I'm, I'm actually liking the the stock width uh, of of the bike. It it does, uh, it handles really well in the in the trails. And I don't know. I mean the. A lot of people don't like the way the stock suspension rides on the Banshee, but um, a stock Banshee and a Banshee that you widen two inches, it's gonna have a different riding characteristic. So again, it goes back to what you like. Uh, one of the things I do miss about not having the wide front end is the plus two plus one arms actually move the front tire one inch forward. So I do miss that. Uh, you know, when you're riding and stuff, you're, you can kind of, your foot can, um, you know, I don't know. It's just nice to have that. I find, I find it's nice to have the front wheel a little bit further forward. As far as width in the rear goes, no, I don't miss that. I kind of like the stock. A lot of people bitch about the chain adjustment on the stock. And honestly, I don't have any problems with it. I replaced uh, some of the hardware here with some stainless steel bolts and uh, replaced one of the adjusters. 
It's fine. Uh, the only you know the only thing that you got to do is after you make the initial adjustment, go ride the bike, come back and grab your wrenches and re-tighten the uh, the four bolts. There's well, there's only there's one up here and there's one down here, and just re 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 tighten re tighten them and you're good uh, that's a mistake that a lot of people make with the chain adjustments is they just make they make the adjustment they tighten everything down then they ride it and then they're wondering why it's loosening up well did you retighten it because a lot of uh things will the bolts and everything will have a tendency to to move so uh yeah definitely and that goes for everything on, on a bike like this uh, always double double check it uh after you you know go out for a ride ride it around shake it down a little bit then come back and re you know retighten and make sure that the 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 bolts and the fasteners are tight so uh that's another important thing i've got the front fenders off right now you're probably asking god that thing just looks it looks naked it looks naked without it yeah i kind of like a i kind of like like it without the fenders it i've been shaking this bike down you know since i've been doing a lot of uh work to it you know making some adjustments here and there so it's great not having the plastic on you know checking the coolant reservoir uh, i've got a little bit of a i've got a gopro mount going on here that i've been experimenting with and it gives a, it gives a different camera angle i've tried it once and i thought it was okay but i don't think it's as good as the helmet mount it's a it's a great runner i'm, I'm really really pleased with it. the only uh, the other thing that i'm in the process of doing right now is uh is the foot pegs and i've i've been experimenting with different handlebars as far as the height goes and i've got about a one in one and a half inch riser on the handlebars i find that to be right that to be really good but next thing i'll be working on is the foot pegs i don't like the position of the stock foot peg i have really large feet i've got size 15 so my feet are a little bit cramped in here and so what i'm going to be doing is leak out the the the, the leak out the secret information here <laughs> no i'm going to be doing a follow-up video coming up talking about but i'm going to be going to a newer style yfz 450 foot peg and the yfc 450 foot peg my understanding is it's going to probably be about this farther back this will be the front of the face and then it's going to be a little bit lower there's not too much modifications that have to be done i think you have to you got to grind a little bit out on either one or both of the bolt holes and then on the other side um, I'll probably eventually end up fabbing and putting on a kicker stop for the kickstart uh, for the kickstarter here and I got to put a spacer in or some washers or something yeah I'll be looking for a follow-up video with that YFC 450R foot uh, race foot pegs from a 2009 and newer some of you might be looking at these things and go what are these black things on here yeah these black things are actually their hydraulic hose uh, protectors for hydraulic hose you can go to napa and buy this stuff by the foot but i put it i put it on the frame underneath uh, the pipe here and then also underneath the engine because when you are putting in uh, putting in the engine taking the engine out and even taking uh, removing the pipes and uh, taking the pipes on and off they have a tendency sometimes to rub against the frame and scratch your paint so that's uh, just a little bit of a protector and i think it looks really cool i got that uh, idea from a friend of mine who has a sand rails and he uses this stuff uh, on his sand rail on a few different pla few different places it's super super durable and i think it does look cool i do have a temp gauge an inline temp gauge right here this is another great thing to have to monitor your your temperature you know, if you're uh, if you're really cooking out there, that means probably your your jetting needs to be richer if you're running hot. But that's just a good that's a good guide, a good a good uh, thing to have to know how hot your your coolant is getting. So with that, guys, yeah, I've uh, I really enjoy these these talks. You know, as far as Banshee stuff going on, and I've done uh, talking about what's what's worked. You know, what's worked for me. What do we got? This is a, uh, I really like this clutch lever that's on here. This is a, an MSR, an MSR clutch. I think this is a Raptor short, shorty, short lever clutch. I don't even think they make this anymore, but yeah, it's really great. It's got a couple of different uh, uh, cable adjustments here. You can, for, for a leverage point, it's got three of them. So you, you can choose from on the lever on where it grabs the lever. So it's really great you can it's pretty it's very easy to lubricate and it even has a stop right here for your for your free play as you can see there for your you know free, free play adjustment to take up that i really like that a lot 
I like these rental handlebars a lot. They're real heavy duty. They're they're actually they're heavy. I mean when you when you take them off the bike, um, they're not chintzy or lightweight. They're they're really good. I really like them. I'm not sure if I like the bend, but I may try um, a bend with less pullback on it. So, but then again, that's rider preference. So, anyways, guys, I've been uh, yapping on here for a long time. So, I will chat with you later. Keep on riding banshees. See ya. Peace.